since I started working in oncology about three decades ago, the progress that we've made has been tremendous on every single front. There are probably four pillars that I see uh, uh, making huge progress. One is the personalized precision-based medicine approach in which we are targeting genes that are aberrant in a particular tumor type. We'll be sequencing tumors routinely. We will get reports. We will know which are the genes that are driving that cancer. And then we will be able to design a cocktail of therapies against those genes. So that's pillar number one. Pillar number two is going to be at the growth of our immune therapies. And this is going beyond checkpoint blockade. We are going to also develop an agonist therapies. We're going to develop uh, engineered T-cell therapies. The whole promise of cellular therapy that is uh, seen with CAR T-cells in some forms of leukemia and lymphoma, that will clearly expand to solid tumors as well. The third pillar, I would say, is going to be the whole field of epigenetic therapy. Epigenetic regulation drives chemic many tumors, and we are now beginning to understand that epigenetic elements are what drives many, many tumors and what drives many of the adaptive responses that we see when we block a particular gene or a pathway. And we are beginning to have some of these therapies coming along, but I'll say in the next five years, we're going to have many more of them coming. That's incredibly exciting. And then the fourth pillar would be trying to understand and target the very specific metabolism that cancer has. Cancer has a complete different set of metabolic regulators that cancer cells use for their advantage. The whole thing about glucose metabolism in cancer, we can begin to target uh, those pathways as well. And we have uh, some examples that are beginning to emerge, and we're going to have many more. To all this, to all these four pillars, we're going to add better diagnosis, the whole promise of circulating tumor DNA in the blood so that instead of doing tumor biopsies, we will be able to just take some blood and, and see what's going on. I mean, this could frankly totally revolutionize the way we diagnose cancer and the way we, mon we monitor disease. It could also help make earlier diagnosis because uh, we should be able to identify abnormal DNA in the very beginning when things begin to go wrong. So better diagnosis as well. And then let's not forget about all the classical therapies we have, which are working quite well in many situations. So excitement is occurring also in surgery with the whole less invasive robotic techniques, improved radiation therapies, and then also conventional chemotherapy that we will learn how to use it better. And in some respect, chemotherapy can be seen also as targeted therapy if we use it in the right setting, in the right kind of tumor. The other thing that is important is that 80% of cancer care today is being provided in the community. We will need to make sure that all the knowledge that is being generated in the academic centers, in specialized cancer centers, gets disseminated quickly to the community. So that's why we are so excited about open access, about the possibility of sharing data so that anybody at any time will have access to cutting edge information that can help treat better uh, a particular patient that may be anywhere uh, in the US or around the world. As we have millions of survivors, uh, the discussion is gonna be not only about curing patients, but also making sure that those that are cured, that are gonna be counted by the millions, uh, they have good lives, devoid of side effects, and devoid of long-term sequelae. So lots of discussion on what does it mean to be a cancer survivor and how do we provide care to these patients. And then, of course, the whole issue that we will need to focus on prevention. We are talking about treating cancer uh, efficiently. We are talking about curing more patients. But what about uh, truly preventing cancer to begin with? And that's an area that has been incredibly difficult to tackle as our knowledge of what cancer is and as we have more tools and as we have better ways to analyze tumors themselves, we ought to be able to understand better genetic risk, to be able to understand better what are the modifiers that may have an effect on the incidence of cancer. So I think that down the line, if you tell me 20 years from now, what would be the dream, I think, would be to focus on prevention and 
basically preventing cancer from occurring to begin with.